let us discuss coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease is also known as your coronary heart disease, atherosclerotic heart disease, or simply heart disease. Take note that the main problem in this disorder is the term atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is the abnormal accumulation of fatty substances and fibrous tissue in the lining of your arteries. Because of this atherosclerosis, there is blocked and narrowing of your coronary vessels, which would lead to the major problem, which is the reduction of the blood flow to your myocardium. Because of this reduction of blood flow, it leads to inadequate per tissue perfusion, even of the vital organs and peripheral tissues. If not managed, it could lead to life-threatening clinical manifestations and possibly even death. Non-modifiable factors include family history. So there is higher risk of coronary artery disease if there is somebody from the family with coronary artery disease. The higher the age, the lesser the flexibility and pliability of your arteries would be, hence the higher risk also for atherosclerosis. Gender, it was initially thought to be more common among males. However, recent statistics would show that uh, there is equal occurrence or prevalence among men and women in all ages. For race, it's also common among Americans. Modifiable, so hyperlipidemia. The main problem in hyperlipidemia is the elevation of your low-density lipoprotein. Take note that your low-density lipoprotein is considered to be the bad cholesterol. As a bad cholesterol, it tends to adhere to the arterial endothelium. Because of that adherence, it results to plaque formation. Then, for your high-density lipoprotein, the high-density lipoprotein is considered to be a good cholesterol. Hence, your patient is advised to increase intake of these substances. It is a type of lipoprotein that transports other lipoproteins to the liver, where it can be degraded and excreted. So it protects the heart against your heart disease. That's why oftentimes the patient is advised to take fish oil and other healthy oils. Then you have your triglycerides. Triglycerides are fatty acids and transported through the blood by a lipoprotein. So again, take note, LDL and triglycerides are considered to be harmful to our blood vessels. Hence, they need to be decreased in our diet. Next, we have cigarette smoking or tobacco use. Your cigarette smoking and tobacco use has threefold effect to our heart. First, the inhalation of smoke would cause the increase of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide in itself could damage the blood vessel wall. It could promote cholesterol deposits, hence decreasing the blood oxygen supply to our myocardium. Second, the substance nicotine is both a stimulant and causes vasoconstriction. It's a vasoconstrictor. As a vasoconstrictor, it stimulates your sympathetic nervous system, which releases your catecholamines. Your catecholamines could possibly increase the workload of the heart and the oxygen demand. Because of that, there is a chronic increase in your blood pressure and heart rate. The third one, your smoking also increases the oxidation of your low-density lipoprotein. Because of that increased oxidation of your low-density lipoprotein, the vascular endothelium is also damaged. Next, hypertension and diabetes mellitus. Poorly controlled hypertension and diabetes mellitus could also lead to your coronary artery disease. Hypertension, blood pressure of greater than 140 or greater than 90, could result to damage of blood vessel wall. So long-standing blood pressure increase could increase the stiffness of your blood vessel wall, resulting to vessel injury. Because of that injury on your blood vessel wall, there will be an inflammatory response. The inflammatory response results to hypertrophy, hyperresponsiveness of the blood vessel, resulting to your atherosclerosis also. Then, hypertension increases the workload of your left ventricle. If you can recall, your hypertension increases your afterload. Hence, it can increase the workload of your left ventricle. Because of that, it can result to the enlargement and thickening of your myocardium. This enlargement and thickening of your myocardium could result to heart failure. On the other hand, your diabetes mellitus, which is characterized by hyperglycemia, is also leading towards dyslipidemia. So when I say dyslipidemia, an abnormality on our blood lipid levels. Also, there will be an increased platelet aggregation and altered RBC function. All of these factors combined, it could lead to thrombus formation. And with that, it could also lead to your atherosclerotic plaque formation. 
Okay, that's why these two disorders, hypertension and diabetes mellitus, needs to be controlled properly using the proper maintenance medications, without which one of the sequelae will be your coronary artery disease. Estrogen. Estrogen is a hormone which is used to believe we used to believe to have protective effect on the heart and the blood vessels. Okay? So your estrogen allows relaxation and expansion of your arteries. Hence, it would improve the blood flow. With the decrease of the estrogen among women, especially for those who had premature menopause, the protective effect of estrogen to the heart is gone. Hence, it increases the risk of the women for MI within the next 10 years from menopause. Okay? Also, you can have patients who have had TABSU. So we refer to that one as surgically induced menopause before the age of 35. It also increases the risk for your myocardial infarction. Okay? Your estrogen replacement therapy, on the other hand, is also associated with increased incidence of CAD, breast cancer, DVT, stroke, and pulmonary embolism. So you need a comprehensive workup to decide whether the patient needs to have estrogen replacement therapy. Then obesity. Obesity, body weight of greater than 30% from the ideal body weight, and fat distribution in the abdominal area increases the risk of your CAD. The waist to hip ratio of greater than 1 is to 1 is also a significant risk factor for CAD. Physical inactivity or your sedentary lifestyle. Okay? Regular exercise tends to be helpful in the management of CAD. Without this, you will have the higher risk for atherosclerotic plaque formation. So your goal is moderate intensity aerobic activity of at least 75 minutes per week. Among the personality types, type A personality is considered to be at higher risk for stress and also for CAD. When I say type A personality, these are personality behaviors which are aggressive, competitive, hostile, short-tempered. They are more time-conscious. Okay, so they are at higher risk for CAD. Type B personality. Type B personality are those with combined affectivity or negative affectivity and social inhibition. Okay, you're introverts. So they have a tendency to have more cardiac symptoms but are less likely to report cardiac symptoms. They have it, they don't report it. It also has been reported that they have a tendency to have increased disease severity, increased cardiac mortality, impaired health status, and more depressive symptoms. Hence, they are linked to more fatal cardiac events. Okay? Remember that the negative emotional states or negative affect, anxiety, anger, and hostility in the genesis of CVD could result to excess of catecholamines and subsequent increase in cardiovascular reactivity. That's why class, your negative affectivity, negative affect, negative attitude, anger, and social inhibition are all considered to be risk factors for the development of coronary artery disease. Use of oral contraceptives. Your oral contraceptives have been associated with higher levels of triglyceride and low-density lipoproteins. It decreases also your good cholesterol. It induces your glucose intolerance. All of these factors combined would lead to your coronary artery disease. Looking at the pathophysiology of your coronary artery disease, take note that the main problem is the deposits of your cholesterol in the arteries. Because of that deposits, atheroma or plaques are being formed. And because of that, there will be protrusion into the lumen of the blood vessels and leading to vascular endothelium, which becomes to be necrotic and scarred. Because of this, there is obstruction of your blood flow. So looking at these slides, just remember that the main problem in your coronary artery disease is the deposit of your cholesterol. Because of that deposit of cholesterol and these processes here, okay, it results towards the obstruction of your blood flow. Hence, it is poor myocardial tissue perfusion. Once there is a problem in the perfusion of your heart, the next problem will be the perfusion to other organs also of our body. Assessment findings. Pain, discomfort, pressure, tightness, numbness, burning sensation to chest, arms, shoulders, back, upper abdomen, and jaw are all signs of chest pain. Okay, These are signs of angina. These are signs of poor myocardial tissue perfusion. Dizziness. Dizziness is uh, secondary to the decreased cerebral tissue perfusion, 
weakness or fatigue is secondary to decreased tissue perfusion to the vital organs. Nausea, vomiting, and digestion or heartburn is also common. We're also having sweat and clammy skin or cold clammy skin. This is commonly brought about by chest pain. Then you have your increased but irregular heart rate and then anxiety or generally feeling of being unwell. So looking at the signs and symptoms class, this could be signs of angina. This could also be a sign of an onset of your heart attack caused by an underlying coronary artery disease. In the initial stages of coronary artery disease, your patient may just complain of chest discomfort. However, as the uh, coronary artery disease progresses and results towards um, a higher percentage of the blood vessels being blocked, your patient will experience, will experience signs and symptoms of angina or chest pain and later on signs and symptoms of myocardial infarction or your heart attack. Related to that, because we know that the blood flow towards the heart will be affected, one of the diagnostic studies that you will have is your ECG. It will be able to identify the areas of ischemia and infarction in the heart. In other words, the areas wherein there is poor oxygen uh, transmission or poor oxygenation to the heart. Then you have your echocardiogram, which is um, like the ultrasound of your heart. You have your stress test to check if how the patient's cardiac functioning responds to stress. You have your cardiac catheterization and angiogram, which will be able to identify the blood vessels which are blocked and the blood vessels that needs to be revascularized. Then you also have your heart scan. For the laboratory test, you have your serum cholesterol, triglycerides, lipid profile, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. Take note that this test needs fasting before it can be carried out. So usually it's a 10 to 12 hour fasting for us to carry out lipid profile. And the lipid profile in our setting would usually include your LDL, HDL, and your triglycerides. Then collaborative care for this patient. So we need to have dietary modifications for the patient. The diet should be low in saturated fat. It should be high in soluble fiber. Then you can have your Mediterranean diet. Then smoking cessation is highly recommended because of the effects of nicotine and even the increase of carbon dioxide. Weight loss is recommended for this patient and increase of physical activity. Hypertension and diabetes mellitus should be properly controlled. And then um, avoidance of stress, especially for your patients with type A personality. And then regular exercise is also recommended. Okay, for the regular exercises, there needs to be moderate intensity aerobic activity of at least 75 minutes per week. Okay, again, it should be moderate intensity aerobic activity of at least 75 minutes per week. Then we can have the following drug therapy. So you can have your low-dose aspirin therapy. Take note that one of the problem here is also the deposits of your clots or thrombus formation. So to prevent your thrombus formation, we are having your low-dose aspirin therapy. Niacin or nicotinic acid could also be administered. Then we have your bile acid binding resin, such as your cholestyramine. Your cholestyramine would help on the metabolism of fats. Then we also have your cholesterol synthesis inhibitors or your statins. If you can remember in your pharmacology, you have your anti-hyperlipidemics. Examples of these medications are your statins. You have your lovastatin, pravastatin, simvastatin, atorvastatin. And then your patient could also opt for complementary and alternative medicines. However, these medicines are not widely established in the medical field. So it needs also to be taken under the supervision of your physician. Common nursing diagnosis for this is acute pain, which is related to decreased oxygen supply to your myocardium. You have your risk for decreased cardiac output due to the ineffective pumping of your heart. Anxiety and fear may be related to chest pain and then deficient knowledge, especially if your patient is showing signs of failure in management of diet and lifestyle modifications. That will be the end of the discussion for coronary artery disease.